In this video, we'll look at how to calculate the standard deviation of a set of data. So here is my uh, data that I've been using. We have both the raw data here, the ungrouped data, the actual values, and the frequency distribution of that data here. So let's look at firstly how to calculate the standard deviation from the actual raw data itself. Now that's very easy. We can use the built-in function in Excel. So let me do that. So I'm going to calculate the standard deviation. Now the formula is stdev. Now you have a choice here as to whether you use the one for the population or for a sample. Now in this case, uh, we are looking essentially at a sample of data, so we should use the formula for the sample standard deviation, and that's dot s. So enter the formula in the usual way, the uh, equal sign, the formula name, then in brackets the range of data. If we enter that, you can see we have a standard deviation of 15.650133. Now let me just reduce that down to two decimal places using the decreased decimal button here. Now remember, of course, that has simply altered the display. It hasn't actually cut off those additional decimal places. So that's the standard deviation. Now, in fact, if you were to use the one for the population, you'll get a very similar result. Let's just look at that. So this time I'm going to put dot P. And as you can see, we get a similar result, slightly lower, but very little in it. So it doesn't really matter which one you use here in practice. Strictly speaking, from a statistical inference point of view, you should use the one for the sample. But we're not going to be looking at statistical inference here in, in this video, so it doesn't really matter. So that's how to calculate the standard deviation from the actual data. Very easy. Again, let's look at how to do that if we don't have access to the raw data. We only have a frequency distribution. And just like we did with mean and median, we can use an approximation method to find the standard deviation. And again, as with the mean and median, it turns out in general to be pretty accurate. Now to calculate the standard deviation, you need to, uh, from group data, you, you need to use the formula sigma fx squared over sigma f minus the mean squared. That in fact gives you the variance and then we simply take the square root of that to find the standard deviation. So first of all, I need x squared. I need to multiply, uh, find the squares of these midpoints. So let me create a column here. Let's call it xx, or x times x, x squared. And I will work out the uh, squares of these values. I'm then going to multiply the x squared by the frequencies, fx squared. So let me add that column. Let's call it fxx or f times x squared. Okay, those are the two additional uh, bits of data, the two additional columns that I require. So let me enter formula to do those. So first of all, x squared. Now, to square, of course, I could put times g9. I could multiply it by itself, but I'm going to use the power operator uh, in Excel, which is the this symbol here. It's a sort of upside down V. You'll find it above the number six on your keyboard. That raises something to a particular power. In this case, of course, two for squared. So that gives me x squared, which of course is correct. Five squared is 25. Now, of course, I can copy this down to do the rest, but I'm actually, before I do that, I'm going to use do fx squared and then copy them down together. So let me put the formula for the first fx squared, so it equals f, the frequency, times x squared. Enter that. We get 100, of course, 4 times 25. Always a good idea to check that you get the answer you expect. Now, if I highlight both of those and drag down on the little fill box, it will copy both formula at the same time. So 
And since, of course, both formula needed to be left as relative cell references, that's exactly what I want. So now I need to find the sum of the fx squared values. So let me put that in here. Again, I'm going to use the sum function, but I'm going to put that in quickly using the auto sum button again, as always. I click up here. It puts the sum function in. It guesses the range that you want. It's correct, so we can enter that. So that's the sum of the fx values, fx squared values rather. So we've now got all the information we need to find firstly the variance and then the standard deviation. So I'll put the variance here. So the variance here for group data is equal to the sum of fx squared values divided by the sum of the frequencies minus the mean squared. Now if you check the formula to see it's going to work out correctly, you'll see that I don't need any brackets here. It will do the squaring first, then the division, and then it will take away, So, which is the order I want. And remember, of course, if you need to override the order, just use brackets. And to that, we have a variance of 234.56. And now finally the standard deviation, which is simply the square root of the variance. Now, I could work this out by raising this to the power of a half, because uh, the power of a half is in fact the square root, but I'm going to use the built-in square root function, which is SQRT. So find the square root of the variance, and you have a standard deviation of 15.31352. Again, I'll reduce that to two decimal places. And as you can see, it's very, very similar to the ones from the raw data, particularly the uh, population one here. So once again, we can see that this approximation method does give us an answer which is very uh, is, is sufficiently accurate, more than sufficiently accurate uh, to, uh, for our purposes. Okay, so that's how to calculate the standard deviation of a data set.